Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg, and I have that iconic, legendary sports car. It's this right here. This is a Porsche 911 Carrera S. But before we get into this bright red, rear-wheel drive, flat six powered sports car, let's talk about what's going on here. The Porsche 911, if you wanna have on-track supremacy, that's who you call on your phone. You dial 911, and this is what Porsche brings. Now, Porsche has been very smart with the 911. It truly, out of all the brands of vehicles, is a car that truly has evolved over time rather than been a revolution. Now, of course, there have been certain years where they have made some big changes, like when they went from air-cooled to water-cooled, but Porsche has really stayed true to the 911. It's fascinating to think that Porsche once thought about killing off the 911 and replacing it with the Porsche 928, which was that V8 front mount mounted engine in a more GT style performance car rather than a true sports car. But what I wanna find out is if you're looking for a vehicle and you're thinking about, should I go C8 Corvette? Maybe should I go with a Porsche? Maybe I should go with something else? Is the 911, when you look at the pre-owned prices, especially this 2017, is it the one to buy over a C8 Corvette or something to that extent? Let's go ahead, let's dive in and find out. Right off the bat, the color. It's not Guards Red, which is actually my favorite red on a Porsche 911. And that one that, if you look at all the 1980s photos, Guards Red was that bright red that still exists today in the 80s. It really just seemed to be everywhere. This is called Carmine Red. It's a little bit of a deeper red, and it definitely accentuates the lines of the 911. Now, this 911 being a 2017 is what they call a 991.2. So it's a 991 chassis and they did a refresh and that's where the dot two comes into play. Now at the front of the business, you're still going to get that classic style. And I like on the 991s how they did the oval style headlamp, not round like the original, but definitely looking slick LED daytime running lamps. We have our turn signals located down below. Now this one does have the optional headlight sprayers and I am gonna zonk it. And I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, if it's an option, why are you zonking it? I don't like the way it's shiny chrome. It kind of stands out. There's another option that you could pay and get that the same body color. I would have done that. Now, one thing that definitely makes me happy is you get these large rectangular shape corner vents fully function, uh, functioning with those heat exchangers located behind. As we come across that low slung nose, the 911. It's classy, it's timeless, it's definitely sports car. You'll notice in the center section, this is fake. I am gonna have to zonk that, especially on a Porsche 911 Carrera S. You do have that nice front splitter. And then like I said, the way that they sculpted it, it's aerodynamic but it looks like a 911. Now, when you rise up, you have that front mounted trunk, usable space, and I'll show you that in a second underneath. And then of course, the Porsche Crest. So much history going back to 1963 with the 911, and it's been 75 years. 2023 marks the 75th anniversary of the creation of Porsche. So very iconic brand celebrating a major birthday. Now, as we come around the bend, we have some optional wheels and tires. We got these 20 inch wheels all the way around, optional from Porsche. You got the Porsche crest in the center. I like the satin gunmetal Y spoke design. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to clean, but I tell you, it's gonna be one of those pleasures that you're gonna wanna do day in and day out. 245 on the width, 35 series sidewall, and you'll see our traditional red six piston caliper. Now the way that you know that these are steel brakes, besides just looking at the actual steel rotor, which is cross drilled and two piece, is you have the red standard caliper. In 2017, if you got carbon ceramic brakes, these calipers would be bright yellow. Today, you could go black and red on stock steel brakes, or you could go yellow and black on your carbon ceramics, but nice large, six piston caliper and it balances nicely with the Carmine Red. Coming down the side, 911 is all about clean style. You're gonna have the optional color matched 
mirror cap and also the support. Normally this would be gloss black. And then just clean coming towards the rear, color matched door handles. We do have the glass roof, which is nice. All painted black roof on this. And then working towards our rear, you get a nice large quarter window because you still get rear seats on a 911. Nice Turbo S. Once upon a time, all the regular 911 Carreras were all flat sided. Eventually, because of the size of the vehicle and trying to get more rubber to meet the road underneath the rear, they now all have almost a turbo-esque flaring of the fender. And that's when you're washing this, you're gonna wanna rub your hands all over the hips of this 911. You'll notice out back, we still got a 20 inch wheel, a little bit wider. 305 on the width to give us a little bit more rubber to meet the road. This has rear wheel drive. You can get a Carrera 4, which gives you all wheel drive. This being a Carrera S, is giving you more horsepower over a standard 911 Carrera. And then as we swing around, I know I'm dripping sweat all over the place, but this is what hard work looks like. Love that classic shape coming off the back of the car. Of course, we got our horizontal gloss black bars with that engine venting to let cool air into that engine compartment. Because remember, this is truly the only rear engine vehicle. Now you might be saying, well, Joe, Corvette's a rear engine. No, it's not. It's a mid-engine. The new C8 Corvette is a mid-engine. The engine in the 911 is actually past the rear axle. Shouldn't work, but it does. It's always worked very well, and that's what makes it such a legendary car. We're gonna have our active aero. When you get up to speed, this rear section is gonna rise up. It increases your cooling. Love the Porsche 911 Carrera S script. You got your LED lighting on this 991.2. And then dropping it like it's hot, you're gonna get these oval chrome tip exhausts. Not my favorite style or location. I wish they would have put one on each side. And if you're saying, well, Joe, they could have just put them together. No, they can't because that, that's what the GT3, you get a GT3, which is that top level of race car for the road from, from Porsche with the 911. That's where the exhaust is together. One of the reasons why they did this style is because this is the first 911 Carrera ever to have turbocharged power. Now, I know you might be saying, well, Joe, doesn't a 911 Turbo have turbocharged power? You are 100% correct. But 2017 was the first year, no naturally aspirated 911 Carrera. The only 911 that is still available naturally aspirated is the GT3 and the GT3 RS. This is a twin turbocharged flat six, smaller turbos than the 911 Turbo and Turbo S. But why don't I try to pop this rear engine cover and see what we could see of the 911. All right guys, one of the big zonks is there's no way to see the engine in a modern 911, whether it's naturally aspirated or twin turbocharged. So what I did was, is I actually took that active spoiler and put it into the full up position and I'm gonna have Steven kind of show off what's going on back here. So in that up position, you're increasing downforce, but you'll notice from the front end of the spoiler, so as we swing around and show you that front end, you can see how it almost scoops the air and is gonna bring nice cool air for the rear of the vehicle. So what do we got? We got a three liter twin turbocharged flat six that's putting out 420 horsepower because it's a Carrera S, 368 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to a seven-speed PDK. So that's that DCT transmission automatic, zero to 60 in about 3.1 seconds. MPGs 20 in the city, 29 on the highway, and the vehicle only weighs 3,075 pounds. Now, think about this. If you're looking at a C8 Corvette, Yes, a C8 Corvette's gonna have more horsepower, 490 horsepower if you don't go Z51. If you go Z51, you get an additional five horsepower, 495 horsepower. It's got an eight-speed DCT as well. It's a Tremec, so much different than this PDK being a seven-speed, but think about the weight. The weight on a C8 Corvette, we're talking 36, 3,700 pounds. This is 3,000 pounds. So that's gonna make a big difference when you look at how it drives. But while we go ahead, let's fire up this flat six and hear what it sounds like.
All right, guys, one of the things I've always liked about the 911 ever since 1963 is that you have usable space underneath that front mounted hood. I know a lot of times we call it a frunk. You can see the ginormous Porsche calendar that's in there. And that's the goodie box that the original owner got from Porsche with a special pen and all the special paperwork. But you could basically fit two carry-on pieces of luggage in there and still be able to close the hood with no issue. And that's what makes this vehicle so usable. Just like a CA Corvette, you have that usable space up front. But while we go ahead, let's get inside because I wanna show you what a 911 brings to the table. All right, guys, we are inside this legendary 911 Carrera S. And if you ever wonder, Joe, why they call it a Carrera? Why not just call it a 911 S? Carrera goes back to the early days of when Porsche used to race in these road races called Carreras and win, so they decided to take the name and bring it to the car. That's why it's called a 9, uh, 911 Carrera, this being the higher trim, the sportier trim with the S. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I've always wanted a 911. After watching Cannonball run 20 different times, I, I, it just made my heart pitter-patter. But I have to admit, I've never been a Corvette guy, but I'm digging the CA Corvette. How much is this 911? Now, originally the MSRP in 2017 was $130,000. And you have to remember that with 911s, it's like a smorgasbord of options that you could add. Most 911 owners add about $30,000 in options. And this one has quite a few. The price that they're asking for it at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete is right around $94,000. Let's see what you get and how it stacks up to the CA Corvette to the door panels. Nice, clean style. I love how timeless the door panel is, the simplicity, no gloss black. You got that silver on the door handle to open up the door. You got your switch gear with no gloss black and then you'll notice we have the Bose sound system and you actually have two pockets, one by the speaker grill cover and then that second one opens up. I'll show you how it does that on the driver's side. You could easily get, I would say, a couple bratwurst in there with some extra sauerkraut. Going from the door panel to the dash, like I said, the evolution of style. You look at a 1969 911, you're still going to get the same basic layout. Some of that silver trim like on the door handle, this is very smart. The new 911s don't even have this two cup holders nicely integrated but as i always say you're never going to drink in my 911 on a new on a new carrera there's only one cup holder and it's right here for the passenger it's like hidden and it pops out but very smart the way they did that this one has the sport chronograph chronograph package how do i know that it's got the clock right up top your stopwatch just gives it that extra specialness working your way down they did update the infotainment system in 2017 so this is new operating software you do have your navigation i also like the way it's so cleanly integrated and it's very easy to navigate through like i, I have no issues with it take the shifter go into reverse there's our backup camera with trajectory which is nice and you got the sensing technology all the way around we got our dual climate control this one has ventilated seats and heated seats three stages each i'm going to put mine on this is gonna operate that seven speed PDK. It says PDK right there in case you forget what letters it is. You don't want it to be like BBC or CNN or CBS, it's PDK. Then working your way towards the rear, you could adjust the rear spoiler automatically by hitting the button to make it go down. That way you could cruise around the mall parking lot and show it off to everybody. You got your exhaust to open up, that pesky auto start stop. This is for the shade, which I'll show you that for our glass roof adjust the shocks hit that you got a nice little cubby here for some tic tacs and a nine volt i highly recommend running a radar detector and then you have the leather and the leather has aged very nicely open it up you could put two german twinkies in there and if you want to well joe what's a german twinkie that's where it's filled with sauerkraut so you got your sponge golden delicious cake instead of cream it's sauerkraut and then the seats these are those optional multi-way electric adjustable you do have all your power adjustments down below. Nice bolstering that's not gonna squeeze you. It feels just right. And like 911s of early days, you do get two rear seats. I wouldn't sit back there if you paid me. So it is tight, but it is nice to have that flexibility. Love the way we got the extra room in here for your 
Headspace Alcantara, and then I'll open up the shade. Nice power shade, look at that, fast. One, two, three, close it up. Why don't you get your butt over here? I wanna show you behind this amazing steering wheel in this Porsche 911. All right guys, time to come on in. I'll show you that pocket. You could put at least another four Twinkies in there, German style of course. You got two memory seat settings, which are nice. And then as you're greeted, when you open up the door, you got that Carrera S badge. Nice aluminum finish. Down in the pedal box, right out of a Porsche race car. Aluminum brake pedal, throttle, and dead pedal. If you go with the manual, it's a seven speed in 2017. So seven speed manual or seven speed PDK. You got all your seat controls, easy to get to, multi adjustable. I love the way the space is. If you've never been in a 911, once you drive one, you get it. You understand why this car is so loved. And it's the attention to detail and the materials that really separated from the C8 Corvette steering wheel. I mean, look at it. No gimmicky D-shape, S-shape, square-shape, triangular-shaped steering wheel. Nice, small, round steering wheel. I love the way they hollow out the spokes. You got your mode adjuster right here just by twisting the knob and then you got metal paddles to go up and down that seven speed PDK. This does have the optional tilting and telescoping steering wheel that's electric. And then the dash just makes sense. It's a thing of beauty. You have of course your large tack in the center, your digital displays flanking that makes it real easy to be able to see all the information. And I could scroll through all that information including a G meter on the gauge right of the analog tack. The rest of it is analog. I'm fine with that, but why don't we go ahead, I've already showed you what's underneath the trunk. Let's go ahead, it's that time. Let's go for an on-throttle spin in our 911. All right guys, we are in this 2017 Porsche 911 Carrera S. I have it in manual shift mode. I'm gonna use those paddles for the PDK. This thing has launch mode. Get ready for it, left foot on the brake, Right foot on the throttle. On oh, throttle, here we go, yeah! <laughs> Woo! Smooth shift from that PDK. On the brakes. Look at this, you just get it. You understand why this 911 has been around for as long as it has with not a ton of changes. I mean, look how balanced it is in the corner. Rolling on throttle! Steering wheels perfect, brakes feel freaking fantastic. And the downshifts are just so crisp, so crisp. I gotta go around this bit of sand here. I don't wanna get beautiful carmine red all dirty. So that's why I'm going into the oncoming lane. So save the comments, save the comments. But let's just take a valuation of what the hell just happened. The inside of the car is so well laid out. The tack, smack dab in the center. You don't need a head-up display. You got it right there in front of your freaking face. The steering wheel, perfectly sized. The seats, even though these aren't the carbon buckets, still do a great job of holding it in place. And like I said, with the car being a 2017, the materials have aged very nicely in here. You pull this up to a C8 Corvette, they, it's gonna look brand new. Both of them are gonna look brand new. Now, if you're gonna leave it in automatic mode, the PDK shifts with superiority. And that's basically what every brand that has some type of DCT transmission, that dual clutch transmission, they have modeled it after Porsches. For years, Porsche had that Tiptronic automatic transmission, wasn't very good. The way you shifted were these like sliding paddles on the wheel, like by the horn, which was really weird. Going the PDK route really just opens up the gambit to what the capability of these cars are. And even when we, you go to a track day, leaving it in automatic mode, they shift, they know exactly where to be. Now on newer 911s, you do have an eight speed DCT, just like the C8 Corvette has, but these seven speed BDKs are still lethal. Lethal, and they're lighter than the eight speed. On throttle! Mm. Give it to me! On the brakes, look at this. Yes! Yes! 
all the way up to 7,500 RPM. Woo Smooth as silk. And, and the visibility out the front windshield, it's like you got the two fenders that are the perfect visual reference points. And even though you're sitting low, low in the car, low to the ground, you're perfectly perched to attack those corners like a freaking assassin. Whereas with the C8 Corvette, you are a little bit more sunken in and the car is bigger. So obviously you have those dimensions to deal with. Whereas this, even the 991s are quite a bit smaller than the 992s. So they're not really like 1970 911 small, but they're still on the smaller side and you can definitely feel the less weight. That's the thing I love about this car is like I said, a little over 3,000 pounds. You feel it in a very, very good way. We gotta do launch control again, right? Fire throttle, yeah! <laughs> Woo! Mm. Just so balanced. It's just so freaking balanced. And the brakes, you're able to shed speed just like a freaking German Shepherd sheds hair. That's how quick it is. And we don't have the carbon ceramic brake rotors. The steel rotors are phenomenal in these cars. So don't think you need to spend the 10 G's because that's basically what ceramic brakes cost you if you want to option that in the carbon ceramic brakes. It's a $10,000 option. These steel brakes still do the business very, very nicely. But I don't know about you. I don't want to go back yet. I want to do another on throttle run through some twisties. Are you ready? We're doing launch control. On throttle! <laughs> mm. On the brakes. Yeah, attack it. Attack it. Yes! Mm. God, I love this car. God, I love this car. I love Porsches. I just do. I just do. It doesn't even care. I don't even care what year it is. I love Porsches. And I definitely love this one. Even with the PDK. Would I prefer a manual? Of course. That's a rhetorical question around me. But this PDK is still the business. Folds in line very nicely. Look at this. Very balanced front to rear. Super smooth. That flat six is such a sweet power plant. And yes, it doesn't have the higher scream of the outgoing naturally aspirated engine, but it is faster. It is more powerful. So that's something to uh, take home with you and feel good about. God, I freaking love this car. And you can daily drive it. Daily drive it all you want. I mean, come on. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg. I want to go home with this. Mm. Where's my towel? I'll tell you, it's hot outside, but I'm definitely working up a sweat in here with this thing. Woo! All right, we got to do it. I got to pull the plug. We're going to get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete. So I will see you in a sports car second. All right, guys, it's been an amazing on-throttle experience in this 911 straight from Stuttgart, Germany. Definitely got to thank Miro and the rest of the crew getting us access to this Carmine Red 911 Carrera S. Let me know what you think. Are you gonna go a pre-owned 911 Carrera S? Do you still have your heart set on a C8 Corvette? Maybe you even want a Shelby GT500. Let me know down in that comment section how you're gonna spend your money. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Of course, we need to give it up, Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. Follow him on Instagram, follow him on Facebook, follow him wherever you can because he is on the move and you're definitely gonna to wanna to be following where he goes. Show him some love in the comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.